The highly anticipated film land is back and for the first time this year there are two weekends of events. Filmland Arkansas kicked off this weekend and will continue into next weekend. The executive director and founder of the Arkansas Cinema Society, Katherine Tucker, and producer and board member Jamie Lemons join me to talk about the cinema scene in Arkansas and all of these events and screenings taking place in the festival. All right, Catherine and Jamie, thank you so much for being with me here. Filmland, a two week end event in Arkansas now. Catherine, I want to come to you first with this. What is Filmland for people who do not know and how does one participate? Filmland is our annual celebration of cinema um, that we started back in 2017. And it's a curated selection of films from the festival circuit and beyond. Um, we always try to have a filmmaker present for every screening that includes the Arkansas films. And if we don't have a filmmaker present, it's a sneak preview of an amazing film that we just had to get. So it's it's a quality over quantity um, film festival really built for the bandwidth of our audience. Um, all of our programming is um, single venue, so we have no cross programming. Um, it's very clear uh, what's happening at Filmland. It's just day to day schedules, back to back films and workshops. Jamie, you are a a film producer, and you are also on the board of the Arkansas Cinema Society. How did you get drawn into this? Was it Catherine? Did she have some sort of um, ransom that she could hold over your head, or what was this? Catherine has a lot of ransom that she holds over my head daily, um, which is why we still work together. Um, no, I'm a yes. I'm very proudly a founding board member of Arkansas Cinema Society, and it was the easiest yes I've ever said. Um, I love Arkansas more than anything you can imagine, and I have spent more than two decades um, having to live in Los Angeles to work to do the job I love, and I want to do it in Arkansas. And I have had to travel many times to Georgia and Louisiana and Texas and Canada and uh, all manner of places to make movies on location and watch watch money just pour and flood into those states. And it infuriates me because we could be doing that here. And so when the, the idea of Arkansas Cinema Society came about, um, yeah, it was the easiest yes ever. All right, we're going to come back to that topic you just brought up here. Um, Catherine, I'm going to come back to you and talk about this partnership for Filmland this year is with the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts, which has opened their incredible museum after a couple of years of renovation. Tell me about that partnership and what participants at Filmland can expect. Yeah, the second that they announced their partnership, um, I immediately started uh, working with Victoria Ramirez to figure out a way to have robust film programming at the, at the museum. And um, they have been in since, since day one, we've been uh, back and forth for three or four years now. And Victoria totally gets it. The AMFA totally gets that film is the most accessible art um, in, in the world right now. And, and any great museum you go to, all over the country has robust film programming. So we're totally thrilled and delighted to be able to offer this type of programming in Arkansas year round, um, not just at film land and the educational opportunities that are possible there. And then not to mention the actual cinema, um, they really invested and went all in on the cinema and the performing arts center. And it's the best place to watch a movie in Arkansas. We we had um, Craig Brewer come with Hustle and Flow over the summer. He's obviously seen the film a thousand times and he just went in to check out the screening at the top of the film. And he said it looked and sounded so good that he stayed. Um, and it's so fun for filmmakers to get to see their films projected in the best possible light. And that's what keeps filmmakers coming back. We have to project these films better than you can see in your living rooms or who's going to come. Um, you want to, you want it to be an experience. And I think it completely is at the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts. And we're beyond grateful to have a home. That was really one of the, the, we were circling, trying to find a place that we could call home for seven years. And it's so unbelievable to have that space. 
I'm glad that worked out. Victoria Ramirez is a great leader for that uh, museum. And I know that that's going to be a great long-term partnership. Jamie, you actually will have a uh, film that you've helped produce that will be there, Lady Bird Diaries. You know, that's going to appeal to everybody on the wall behind me here. Um, Tell me a little bit about Lady Bird Diaries and what uh, what that experience is going to be like. Actually, I didn't produce it. Oh, okay. um, I'm sorry. I thought you did. You're leading, you know, you're leading the conversation on it. I but. am. I'll be moderating the Q&A with the person who did produce it, um, a brilliant woman named Kim Reynolds. And um, it's directed by Don Porter, who I did produce a film with. Um, and I think that's why lots of folks are thinking maybe I had something to do with this one. But um, uh, I produced a movie called The Way I See It with Don. So I have a, a long history with her. This movie is extraordinary. It is, um, it's called The Lady Bird Diaries, and that's what it's about. Lady Bird Johnson recorded audio diaries, and she did it every day. Um, She started right after the Kennedy assassination. So Dawn has done something truly, truly extraordinary, which is make Lady Bird the documentarian. So she has compiled archival footage and photographs and a lot of things we've never seen before and set them against Lady Bird telling us the story. Um, so we hear her voice from top to bottom. So it is, it's a film for anyone who loves biography, um, politics, history, um, just you know, to get a sense of that time and what what she went through every day. I think it's a maybe the most unique look into a first lady that a lot of people maybe don't understand as much as as they should or would like to and it's gorgeous it's gorgeous all right i'll see if i can get this poster right down here these two guys maybe just to show up at least in spirit so absolutely um they're both heavily featured. <laughs> yes, I bet they are. All <laughs> yeah. right, for both of you to uh, to wrap up this interview, uh, Catherine, I'll let you go first. Jamie, you go second. Just tell me what the experience is like right now for not only filmmakers in Arkansas, but for film lovers in Arkansas. Where are we kind of at coming out of COVID, m- moving forward in Arkansas? Are we Are we headed in the right direction? Yeah, I think we're absolutely headed in the right direction. I think change takes time. And change takes compromise, and um, I think we're 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 making progress definitely in the right direction. And I I think these next couple of weekends in Arkansas are representative uh, representative of that. We have the Hot Springs Documentary Film Festival also happening in October, as well as the Fayetteville Film Festival happening, and we get people you know asking us you know about cross programming, but my. <laughs> My, I'm excited to have all of this robust film programming. So now we're complaining about too much film programming. (laughs) Um, But I think it's, I think it's wonderful. And we have great relationships with all of the, all of the different film festivals and we're sharing press and filmmakers. And um, I'm, I'm very excited about, about the possibilities. And I think that just watching the Filmland Arkansas submissions every year, we're not just getting more but they're getting better. And every, the amount of quality films we're screening next weekend, this coming weekend um, at the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts is astounding. Um, And they're all great. So I, you know, if I was, if I was a lay person, I would love to just go see what, what, what's coming out of Arkansas right now and how, how much potential there is. And then once all these filmmakers start becoming more professional, for the students, you know, then we want them to be able to have a place to make their films. Uh, and we want them to make them in Arkansas. I love the student films. You're, you know, that we've talked about that a lot before. Jamie, you mentioned earlier, you, you're, you want to do more in Arkansas. How far away are you from being able to do the things that you want to do in Arkansas? I think I'm so close. And I think so many people are so close and you know, we're making progress with regard to tax incentives and we have to become as attractive, if not more attractive than the incentives in neighboring states. Because when, you know, um, big studios look at at where they want to shoot, it's not a sentimental that I'm from, I'm from their connection. They look at it from a bottom line perspective. And so we need to be competitive with them. That said, everyone to a man, to a person, 
that I've brought to Arkansas to experience ACS, to experience Little Rock, and this state wants to come back as fast as they can. They see how beautiful, amazing, um, this incredible place we call home is. Um, it also has, you know, four pretty distinct um, landscapes. It can mm -hmm. double for so many places around the world. There is no reason on earth that we shouldn't be making Arkansas one of the premier destinations for film production. So I, I hope we can. And by the way, everyone tells me how hospitable everyone here is. So I'm really proud of that. And, and they all um, consistently remark on, on what a great time they have when they come here. So thank you to everybody in Arkansas who's uh, rolling out the red carpet every time. That's Catherine Tucker and Jamie Lemons with the Arkansas Cinema Society. You can catch our full interview at, we at our website at talkbusiness.net. And if you want more on the Filmland Festival schedule, check out arkansascinemasociety.org.